Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Max Shoots Film. Okay, today we're in a really cool spot. Henry River Mill Village. It is the site of the Hunger Games, the first one, and it's where Katniss lived, the village that she lived in. It's just outside of Hickory, North Carolina, and per usual, we are going on TripAdvisor and just looking for things to do in our new hometown of Charlotte. Uh, what's really special about today is I'm using the Lomography Sprocket Rocket. It gets about 18 images per 35 millimeter roll. So what we're gonna do is just walk around. I'm gonna familiarize myself with this really unique camera, see what type of shots I can get. The goal of the day is just to really enjoy the outdoors. It's beautiful today, only about 80 degrees. We're outdoors, away from the computer, shooting some film. All right, so I wanna do one portrait mode, but this thing is super wide angle. I mean, it absolutely is a panoramic camera. I've got to account for the sprocket holes on either side. So whenever you compose with this camera, one thing I've seen in the images I've viewed, you need to make sure you uh, account for the sprocket holes. Let's see what we can do. Probably didn't account for the sprocket holes. So I really like this composition. I don't know how it's gonna look on this massive panorama, but we have plenty of layers in the shot. We have the tree, then the little chapel, then trees, and then this cute barn house. So let's see what we can do. Shooting, and in this camera, you have two apertures. I think one is like a F10-ish, and the other is a F16, and as well as exposure modes. If it's cloudy, you go over here to 0.6 to one meter. If it's sunny and you want to shoot a meter to infinity, the mountain view, you have a bulb setting here, the B, you press that shutter and just hold it down, and N is just, it'll click once you go down. It's a really basic camera. All right. Dude, I'm gonna get you in a shot because you're so freaking adorable with that little hat. We're gonna put you over here. So, Looking through the lens, of course, you're not looking through the lens, you're looking through a little plastic toy viewfinder. So everything's kind of distorted. You don't really know what your compositions are. You, approximately they are from videos I've watched online. I've ascertained that you want your primary subject to be in the middle. This one, we have two barns that both appear in the viewfinder. So my goal is to capture both of them, leave enough room on the tops and bottoms for the sprocket holes and just cross my fingers. Lomography, they make really fun, cool stuff. I'm excited to be shooting this. All right, so there's nothing stopping you from doing a double exposure. If you don't advance, you can just keep pressing the shutter and you can overlap a million images. You can even rewind and go back over a previous one. What I wanna do now is I wanna do a double exposure of this barn and then with the trees behind it. So I'll take a photo of the barn, I'll swing around, take a picture of all these leaves. We'll see what that looks like. Shot one is done. I'm gonna spin around and grab a picture of these branches. So it does have a hot shoe that will fire a flash, but I'm gonna talk about winding the film to the next frame. Wind here, this is your frame counter, and when a white dot appears in this window, stop. And it doesn't have to be a number every time, so I'm gonna wind. I'm going on to my last frame, which I think is frame 18. See there's a white dot, I know to stop, and that's it. Pretty sure that was my last shot of the roll. So now we'll walk back to the car, swap out rolls, walk across the street, shoot one more roll, and then we're out of here. Just rewind. I felt a bunch of tension and now I'm just gonna rewind. Real quick, it has a 
cam uh, film canister view there, which is really rad. Even my Nikon FM2 doesn't have that. So, Lomography Sprocket Rocket 1, Nikon FM2 0. Loading has its very specific process. Before you start, make sure you turn this sprocket to where the white hole is in the window there. Then just pull the film across. There's a little tooth there to grab the sprocket. Load it in, make sure it grabs that. That tooth has the sprocket. Now I'll wind it just enough to feel comfortable that it is gonna take the film across. Then just pop your back back on. Clips on both sides are secure, and then you just crank on until you see you get to number one. So we can go across here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this bridge right here. So I wanted to grab a couple portraits, lands, landscape and portrait mode. I've seen quite a few online. I would love some golden hour light, but I'm not gonna be picky. I'll take what I can get. <laughs> Is she being a punk back there? <laughs> Lomo sprocket. We're gonna do the corniest shot ever. She's gonna throw some leaves up and be like, ha 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 ha. See, she's already doing it. <laughs> on, on three, hold on, let me. Uh, on three, I'll throw one, two, release. On one, two. Got it. So the leaf shot, I think I blew it. I was set on near focus setting. You have to constantly double check your settings. That's a great lesson to learn. Uh, when we started walking away, I looked down, I was like, oh crap, I was set to one meter. So always look down, check your settings, then take your shot. One, two, three. Perfect. All right, we tried that again. I had to get that shot and I needed to know I got it in focus. Hopefully that was it. So what did you guys think? What an absolutely cool camera. I've been wanting one of these for a long time, but they've been out of stock. I received an in-stock notification and immediately pressed buy. It's about 75 bucks for this brand new, which may seem a little high, but it's a very unique concept. It's one of the first cameras built exclusively around the concept of exposing the sprocket holes. So it's really cool. I love shooting pano sprocket photography. This has got me hooked and wanting to explore even more specifically. I wanna figure out how to adapt 35 millimeter for my Pentat 6.7. Then I can shoot higher quality sprocket hole exposed pano 35 millimeter photos. Say that three times fast. Holy crap, that's tough. So. I did scan these myself. I scanned them using the Essential Film Holder, which has a mask for Pano 35 with the sprocket holes exposed. Real quick, Lomography also sells a Digiliza for 35 millimeter and 120. I only have a 120 now. That's how I scan my 120 film on a Epson V650 flatbed. I scan my 35 millimeter, typically on a Plus Tech 8200i. But for this, like I said, 
I had to mirrorless scan this with the essential film holder. A couple of things, right? One, make sure you keep it straight because in post it's really difficult to uh, straighten it out because the sprocket holes show obviously in the photo and the edges of the film show. So if you don't scan it straight, it's hard to correct it in post and make it look straight. So get that right in the scanning process. Also, with the essential film holder, it was really difficult to keep the film completely flat. It bowed some, and as you'll see in this image of Danny, it bowed out towards the camera, which created more distortion. This already is a toy camera, which has a slightly distorted view in it, which I love the look, that's the whole point of this. And the whole point of Lomography in general is just to have fun, don't worry about like quality, worry about the mood and the image, totally fine. There's no need to exaggerate it in your scanning process. So pay attention to is your film straight, right? And is it not bowed and try to correct that. I think the 35 version of this would have kept it much flatter. And then of course, for converting it from, you know, the image that was shot with the digital camera, I used Negative Lab Pro, which inverts the negative and imparts that color. And typically I don't like Negative Lab Pro. That's the one reason I've stayed away from mirrorless scanning is because it's just so saturated and my range of possibilities in post decrease greatly because it bakes in so much of a look into the image. Now for these Lomography images, I think it worked well because it's a dramatic, crazy, unrealistic image anyway. And what Negative Lab Pro adds, I think it complemented it. Now, I'm not saying you can't get great images with Negative Lab Pro. I've seen some people upload absolutely amazing images. I'm saying I can't get great images out of it. And the only reason I can't is it's a time thing, right? If I spent more time with the software, absolutely I can make better images. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I scanned them so fast just because I was so freaking excited to get these images in a format where I could see them. I haven't been this excited shooting film or digital in quite some time. And it was really amazing just to have a carefree day knowing that they don't have to be the sharpest, most perfect images. It was just gonna be fun. And hopefully you saw that fun carried out throughout the entire video. Danny and I had an absolute blast just walking around that place. Guys, thanks so much for coming along. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps more than you know. And if you're into this type of content, please consider hitting that subscribe button down below. Click that bell next to it so you don't miss any further videos. Okay, I'm going to shoot some more Sprocket film. See you next episode.